Jeff and Lex said we back at it again. Hey, Monday night said we back at it again. Hey, tell your friends that we back at it again. Hey, hello everybody. It is me, your girl Lex D M U A. This is my boy Jeffrey Taylor from Jeffrey Show Live, and we are back with another episode review of review of Love and Hip Hop New York. Episode oh season ten episode six between a rock and a hard place. Okay, I remember the name y'all this time. I'm back on it. I'm back on it. So yeah, we doing a little something a little different, you know, with the shades. You know, we low key celebrity. <laughs> low key. Low key. Low so, key. You know, gotta wear, gotta wear shades at night. What you got up? You try to come to some events in the city. I mean, I think I might hit up that uh, that carefree black girl party. Okay. On the 20th. I would come to the vision board party, but I'm gonna be out of town, so. Okay. Where are you going? It's my grandma's birthday, nice. so we're throwing her a big party. That'd be nice. Surprise. Um, kind of. We told her we're doing something for her birthday. She just doesn't know that it's a party. Yeah. That's gonna be nice. So yeah, so I'm gonna be out of town, so I'm gonna try to go to that next uh, on the twentieth. Nice. What about you? Yeah, I'm probably going up to that too. Show my yeah. face, and I want to get into more um industry events. So yes. So um, this Wednesday it's a real late. It's at 10 p.m. But it's like a bad boys club. What's that? Um, bad boys. The movie. Yeah, they're having like a a VIP like screen. Screening. <laughs> Look at this. We can talk about this. So about what? That. Let's hop up into this thing. You know, we don't like long introductions over here. So let's get into it. So um, this episode in, begins where it ended off last week with Erica, Sin, and Jonathan um, talking at the table. And Sid is like, Sin is like walked off talking to her sister because apparently her baby wasn't feeling good. And while they have this break, Erica and Jonathan are talking. And Jonathan's like... Erica, like, you know, come on, like, you knew, like, Sin was going to feel some type of way. And Erica's like, honestly, I'm telling you, Jonathan, I thought nothing about her. Like, he was like, I don't, I don't know her state of mind. I don't know, you know, whatever, whatever. And Jonathan's like, well, you know, basically, clearly, this is still really sensitive for Sid. Like, you should be considered that. And Erica, it finally like dawns on Erica. Why are you shaking your head? Because last week I didn't really get. I felt like she should have. She was being messy, but this week I'm kind of in ghost figures that it's the reverse. That why should she care? Like she's not thinking about you. So True. I feel like I didn't understand that last week, and now I finally get it this week, and that's why I'm kind of like, why they keep trying to drill it into? I think. I mean, I think what it is is like they just like Erica just admit you were being messy, <laughs> and Erica's just kind of like I didn't see myself as being messy. But then you know when Jonathan's broke it down to her, and and basically in Erica's mind, she didn't think she was being messy because she thought like sin was over. She was like normally when sin sin breaks up with people, she normally be like all right, I'm done with that person. I'm a bad b whatever whatever. She doesn't care. Basically, Erica did not know that Sin still really cares about Joe or was trying to work anything out with Joe. And so, once she got that information, she was like, oh, okay, I understand now why she's so pressed, basically. It's like, oh, okay, so you still want to be with this man. This is why you care. Because if you didn't, like, you wouldn't care anymore. And so, she was kind of like, okay. So, by the time Sin comes back to the table, she was like, all right. So, Jonathan talked. He broke it down to me, and I understand where you're coming from. You know, if you still trying to, you know, be into something with your baby father, I understand, whatever, whatever. Then they hug, Sin rubs her belly and everything, and it's all... It's you need to bring a little bit of that old Sin back. With the <laughs> that old was cute. Sin. When Erica said that. Oh. That was cute. She's like, yeah, you need to bring the old Sin back. Like, up these niggas and all this she, stuff. Right, like, that was cute. So it was cute or whatever. Basically... We just seen like the end of a storyline, you know. That's that. They told Erica, "All right, cut, cut that out. Let's end this." Right. <laughs> so we move it on. Erica really has a lot going on this season. 
Yeah, she does. I, but I kind of wish her and Safari wasn't on this season. Really? Yeah, because like it seems like all of their storylines are forced. Like they don't seem like real drama to me. Oh. It's it kind of like everything has been like stuff being blown out of proportion. Even Safari cry next week. But I don't know what that's about though, and that that might, that, that might be real. But so far, all the the issues have been stuff that been blown out of proportion. Like the like the like the only thing that seemed a little bit real was the prenup thing, but even that kind of just seemed like. It kind of seemed like one of those things, yeah, they did have that issue, but they probably worked it out before, and now they're just reacting it out for the show. But everything goes to any blow out of proportion, like the whole Yandy invitation, blown out of proportion. This whole thing with Sin and Erica, blown out of proportion. Like, even this episode, Erica being mad at Safari for being cool with Rich again. But to me, that feels a little bit... Well, where's so loyalty? I mean, I understand... So basically, okay, so let's since we already wrote it, let's just go talk about it because I don't want to lose people. So basically, at the end of the episode, um, well, let me, uh, in, the be- in the middle of the episode, um, Safari meets up with Bitch. And they meet up at the gym, and they're talking about, you know, how last season, you know, him and Rich wasn't really on the up and up because, you know, the, 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 I guess the stuff with Erica. But then, you know, at the reunion, Safari, of course, sticking up for his girl. He was like, you keep talking about her, and she's not here to defend herself. You're talking about her, and she's not here to defend herself. And you know, that's when Rich tried to get his old arthritic self up on that ch- up on that table, tried to jump on Safari, like, and Safari was unfazed because he knew that man, nor his jury curl, was going to do anything. Like, and so, basically, basically, Safari, being the cancer that he is, let's bygones be bygones. And let's everything be cool with Rich, you know. And he's kind of like, you know, I see that what happened, you know, I understand. I mean, I understand, but they basically like, whatever, you know, dudes, they they forgive easily. And so Rich is like, okay, well, what about Erica, you know, because she, you know, she didn't, she want to give me. I'm like, why are you so pressed about a hug? Why does she need to hug you? And he's like, you know, but, uh, you know, she's at the funny towards me. And Safari's just like, you know, with Erica. She, you know, she, once you done crossed that path where it ain't so easy to just, you know, forgive. And, you know, Eric still got the same way. And even at the end of that scene, Rich is like, oh, well, real question. Does wifey know that you're here with me? Mm. And, like, Safari kind of laugh it off. And it's kind of, like, understood, like, no, Erica does not know. So, fast forward to the end of the episode. Erica and Safari are having a bachelorette party and bachelor party together in the same building would you do that would that's you? so whack no i know i mean if i'm having my bachelor party my last time as they say being single why would i want it to be in conjunction with my men like, it seemed like it was pretty separated for the most part though i mean it did like it was in two separate buildings but the fact that you can even walk over to my space like i'm good on that um, but also, like, you know, every woman is different, but honestly, I can understand, you know, Erica's situation, why they probably have one together, because they're, they're both kind of dumb, um, <laughs> and Erica had all the strippers, and then the names were just so cringeworthy, so, on one side, you have Safari's Rock Hard Bachelor Party, and at this party, it's nothing but men, I thought we saw one female. Suspect. Okay, but what? I, but what I'm saying is, there was She's nothing going on, right? <laughs> but they didn't, they didn't have no um. They had no strippers there. It was looked like a, just a kit bag. I ain't even seen no food. Like she wanted something calm, something low key. Nigga just was walking around drinking, and I was like, okay. And so then on Erica's side, you have Erica's deep inside bachelorette party. Erica got all the strippers. She got male strippers, female strippers, because of course she reminds us that she is bisexual, <laughs> which is good um, for her, I guess. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't think she really was bisexual. I thought the whole sin thing was a phase, but hey, who am I to tell people who they are? But anyway, so she got all the strippers there, or whatever, and you know that's where you know I don't know if y'all saw that little clip of that that video they posted of Tahiri a couple of months ago when she was at. Erica's bachelor party mm. and how the dude was flipping it and all that type of stuff. I And also, like, that's how I said, everybody's different. Because, like, you know, maybe Safari wanted to keep an eye on Erica. But, like, I don't want to do, like, a show stripper thing for my bachelor party. Like, I'm not that type of girl. 
I don't really like review. I don't like male reviews. I don't like stuff like that. That's not that's not my my. Album. What about females? You don't want to see the females? No, I'm good on that. So no strip clubs. Mm-mm, I'm good. No strippers. No, I'm I'm fine with that. And I would like <laughs> for my man to not also be having no strippers or being at the strip club. I would prefer that, but you know. Everybody's different. But Everybody is different. What about you? Uh, the only thing that I don't like about a strip club is is that I have to use my own money. Well, technically, they, they the strippers was with Eric was but was bought to Erica, but still. Yeah, that's my only thing. So if I casually like go to a strip club or even on a, I just I would have to be spending somebody else's money. That's all. I would have to be mm-hmm. spending. But I would enjoy it, but I would just have to. Because they're kind of like hustlers. Like, they sit in your lap, and they'd be like, that was $20. And I'd be like, I didn't even want. So it's got like, they like, if you went there, you spend the money. So you so. like female strippers or male strippers? Uh, females. Why you don't like male strippers? Um, I just feel like it just... Oh, it's just not the same, like. It's just... But I mean, if, if you're attracted to men, like, why wouldn't you like male strippers? I'm attracted to the females. Oh, you are. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Glad it's these a, shades. It's an exclusive, guys. Wow. Right. So. Okay. Um... You go. <laughs> I didn't know you was for real though. What you mean? I just thought it was something you would say you was trying out. I didn't know you were really coming out as bisexual. Is that true? Yeah. You really are? Yeah. Oh my god. That's good for you. That's good. Great. I guess. What you mean you guess? I'm really proud of you. <laughs> I'm just saying. What's up? I'm just saying, like, you know, that's a good thing. I really, honestly, I really didn't know. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> that's how you know you be laughing about everything. So I don't know if you're being serious right. about something. I thought I was just saying, like, something you was trying, but I didn't know it was, like, a official yeah. thing. Uh, oh, my God. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. So okay, so you feel like the female strip is better? Yeah, I just don't think that the males do it for me. Yeah, I don't. The me, then my thing. I've never been to a male review or anything with male strip clubs, but just when I've seen it, like you know, like whatever on TV or whatever, I just be feeling like they so aggressive, and I just can't handle that. Did you watch Magic Mike? I did, and that was too much for me. If you, even in the, the cute movie, dogs at the party. That was the. Want a girl in the lamp? <laughs> Never forget, <laughs> threw that girl in the air, and then they flew off. Like, no, when me and my homegirls, y'all, <laughs> quick story time. We my homegirls at this Greek party, and this, the cues was there. Me and my friend Lily was just standing there. You're like, you know, I just be standing there chilling at the party. These dudes like pile through us. We like all dart off running in different ways, and they tackle my homegirl. Not game. <laughs> that's how it felt. They tackle my homegirl, and they was humping her on the floor. And they was putting the flash on her. You don't, don't, I like you don't remember that, Jeff. You yeah, was there. Yeah, that's the Right. Was like, that's what I'm saying. I was like, <laughs> woo. <laughs> Terrifying. I got, I got PTSD just for that. PTSD, y'all, just for that. Like, it's too much. It's like, I, also, I'm a small person. So people automatically like to pick me up. Or and those type of things like I I just be feeling nervous because I'm a little person and it doesn't take much to just like lift my little stuff up in the air. It don't matter the size they take on. <laughs> but I'm just yeah. saying I just feel like I'm easy pickings though. They're like oh she's a little she's a little girl a little especially woman. the out of town cues. <laughs> Girl, so just that type of atmosphere just not would be it for me. But anyway, let's get back to the subject at hand. Uh, at these two parties that's in the same building. Let's talk about the guest list too. Oh yeah. So <laughs> on, and this was the problem oh. lies. So Safari side, right? He has invited Papoose. He's invited Joe. Um, and Richie D. And Richie D, I thought it was another guy, but I, possibly, but I can't remember right now. But um, and Richie D, of course, because that's the main problem, especially in the two instances we have seen 
the argument between Erica and Safari is that Safari does not communicate well with Erica. Like, if he thinks it's something that's going to upset her or, like, she probably won't like, he doesn't, he just doesn't tell her about it. That's like a red flag to me personally. Yeah, and I'm like, that's I like Safari, weird. but if I'm, like, seriously trying to date somebody, that's a red flag. No, not even date. I'm fit to marry you, and you're not telling In me In 24 hours. Woo! And so on Erica's side, she got Tahiri. Dude, you say black. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> <laughs> Tahiri is there. Remy is there on her side. And out the pa- a blast from the past. A cameo. <laughs> Amina Butterfly. <laughs> Girl, where Amina come from? Peter. Let me go to Amina for the walk her way back up to season 11. I'm here for the come intro. On, Amina. <laughs> I like Amina. She's like really Amina. pretty. And she's really talented, though. I'll never forget when she slid that color. <laughs> I That's top five. <laughs> Not top five. That's what it was in the love and hip hop countdown. Yeah, when she slammed the car. Yeah, she, that's what she slammed the, the princess list? down? Uh, nah, the wife. I'm his wife. Amina was his wife. Yeah, so I said she slammed it on the table. That oh. Was like the top five of love hip hop. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's we watched that together. Oh, we did watch that. I forgot. But anyway, so <laughs> Amina is there and uh, some bunch of other chicks that we don't know. Yeah. So basically, they, they was li- doing the most. Doing the most. They find out, whoever these girls are, find out that Richie D is there and they let Erica know that they w- they come and whisper to the Rich, Rich Dolls is in the building. Rich Dolls is in the building. And of course, that got Erica upset because Erica does not like this man. She don't know. She don't want to do it. Right, no well, they They do a little flashback. So why would you bring this man to our party? Or not our party, but like in the same vicinity as me. Or, you know, y'all aren't even friends like that. Why would you invite him? So Erica's girls try to be her girls and they try to, I guess, defuse the situation. So <laughs> Erica does not have to. So they. They bust up in there with their lingerie on and it's a uh, Safari's partner. They're like, all right, so what he doing here? He got to go. He got to go. He got to go. And Safari's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who is y'all? Who y'all think y'all is to be telling somebody to leave? And like a normal man, he dismisses them by throwing money at them. Wow. He like gets a money machine. And he's like, blah, 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 whatever he's saying to them while he's shooting and the, the girl's not picking gun. it up. I mean, I ain't gonna lie about it. But <laughs> it's still degrading and it still was, was dismissive. And so he. <laughs> his weather got me shook, y'all. Um, and so he's throwing money at them and not really listening to her friends when they're telling him, like, hey, yo, Erica don't want this man here. Let him tell him to leave. And so he throw, he's still throwing money at them. He's not really listening. Erica, of course, comes through and she's looking at him like, nigga. What you doing? She you called know? that first. And then, of course, as soon as Safari sees Erica, he cuts out all the antics. And she's like, well, what are you doing? Are you are we really throwing money at my friends? Like, are you being disrespectful towards my friends and throwing money at them? And he's like, man, I don't understand what you upset about and da 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 And Erica's just like, whatever, I'm done with this. And she walks away. As soon as he sees that Erica is upset, he does tell Richie D to leave, though. He does. He's like, well, Facts. he's like, well, you know, she not happy or whatever, so hey, you gotta bounce. But he should have just been. I don't understand why the man was invited in the first place. But he should have just been like, out of, cause he should have just been like, out of respect for my future wife. Even though you and me are not good, you and her are not good. So therefore, you cannot be invited to any events that we is doing together. Why would you invite your wife's? X to your bachelor's party. Mm-hmm, Cause I don't even think Sin was there. Then she said that in a previous scene at the photo shoot. She said that it's high and by cordial, but I'm not about to invite her to the bachelor's. Right. Even though Sin got invited to the wedding. So it's a little weird. She, anyway. did, she did run the belly. Mm-hmm. I don't know anyway. I won't just let anybody run my belly. <laughs> I mean when well, you don't have I'm just speaking metaphor. I, feel, yeah. I, feel, yeah. I just joke. I just joke. I feel yeah. I don't know how how I will be when I get pregnant. That's like something evil. Somebody the wrong hands get on that. I feel you. I feel you. I don't know how I feel, but anyway, so yeah, Erica is highly upset, and so 
they you see them going to the bathroom they're like talking she's like why would you invite this man here you're not cool with him y'all not friends like that why would you invite him to something like because a bachelor party is something kind of personal like it's something for like personal friends Right. Even though there was a lot of people at this party, but still, it's like, you invite people that, you know, are you kind of close to, or at least if you're trying to, like, pack out the house, you invite acquaintances. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not people that you really not down for, people you just made up with. Like, that's whack. So, she's talking to him, and Safari, in normal Safari fashion, she's kind of just like, whatever, whatever, you're blowing this out of proportion, I don't understand why you're upset. She's like, I don't understand how you don't understand, like, why this makes you upset, this man degraded me on national television he talked bad about me he called me a b he called me out my name he disrespect me like you know why would i want this man in my space and safari doesn't understand and safari leaves and erica's crying i not the type of girl that's gonna stay at no party and cry either i'm gonna stay and have a good time or i'm leaving but safari get even though remy and them well i don't think they, talk, they weren't talking to him but remy papoose and joe we're talking, and Joe like, I don't understand why Erica's so upset, you know, da-da-da. And Remy was like, well, how would you feel, Joe, if, you're, that Joe, if your partner invited somebody that you're one of your past girls you had beef with, like, and invited her to a party of yours, like, you wouldn't feel no type of way? Like, you would feel a type of way about that. And so Safari gets in the car and hops off, child. He hops off, zoom, and he gone. And Erica's just in the party crying, and her friend's trying to console her. I don't know, this whole thing, like I said, I do understand where Erica's coming from, but I do feel like it's a little blown out of, it got blown out of proportion, but again, she is pregnant, and her hormones are out of control, so you should definitely, even during this time when she's pregnant, even be more sensitive to her needs, you know, like, you should be even more concerned and more delicate, especially when she's pregnant, because her hormones, you know, so it's like, yeah, it probably could have been handled differently, but it's like the same time. It's like, you know, she's just trying to have fun and enjoy herself. She's trying to get married. You know, it's a stressful time. And she's pregnant. That's also stressful. Like, you know, you, you could have been a little bit more thoughtful. That's all I have to say about that. What you feel? Yeah, I didn't like none of it. I think that he shouldn't have did it. That's your, that's your wife. That's the mother of your child. She was disrespected. And you didn't communicate it above anything. Mm -mm. Like, you didn't even let her have any say so, and you continuously do it throughout this right. season. Right. And so, let me ask you this, and then we'll be done with this this topic. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you feel like your partner, do you feel like you guys should, like, not like the same person? So, like, whoever you're with, like, because I think Erica feels like, since she don't like Rich, Safari shouldn't like Rich. Do you feel like whoever's against your partner is against you? I think that it should be respect. I don't think that it should be like dislike, dislike, but it should be like respect. I think that there should be some respect though and some consideration. I just feel like how you said with the national television, especially in this specific instance, like this person disrespected me. So it's kind of like I could see if... You just like I don't like her outfit or vice versa, I don't like his shoes or something petty like that, dislike, dislike. But I feel like you should be considerate of the valid reasons and how it affects that person, whether male or female. So I think that it would lead to it, but it has to be communication for you to understand what's going on. I don't feel like it should be over anything stupid or anything, but at the same time, like in this case, it's kind of warranted, in my opinion, but it has to be, like, some valid reason if we get there. And I feel like that's the same with friendships. Going back to when we had the conversation with friendships, um, I think that it's a little bit more because you're actually romantically involved. That's just my personal opinion than friendships. Like, you're a little bit more romantically. Mm. It's a lot more intimacy, like, in, I uh, hate to take it spiritually, but in, if you go, like, I feel like a female, and it's the same should be for a male, but if the the male is like the the head of the house, it's kind of like, could you imagine like being cool with somebody he doesn't like? Like, that's supposed to be like, biblically, like the head of the house, and you guys aren't like, yeah. it's kind of like you speaking with, what's this guy's name? What's the guy that was beefing with Jesus? 
Judas? Yeah, cool with Judas, so I, and I'm just like, imagine you inviting Judas to the bachelor's party. Sorry. But, and I think that's what Remy Wall was trying to do, too. Yeah. Like, imagine inviting Judas away. <laughs> you supposed to be the number one. Lord, we can pray to Jesus to love and have power. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. With our long path. Well, that's basically for, what Remy was doing, though. Yeah. Well, for me, I well, to me, exes are always like, a oh, no yeah. But that's just me now personally. Now right there. Like, that, to me, that ends it right there. Oh, I mean, I'm not saying that, because, you know, there's two sides to every story. I'm not saying, you know, my partner, they, they had their part in that relationship, too, or why it ended, you know? It takes two people to end a relationship, okay? And it's sometimes just one, because a person be cheating. But anyway, that's another story. But anyway, everybody got their part that they played in it. So I'm not going to say everything was on your ex, but I just feel like we're in a new relationship like me and this person we're together so my exes should be dead to you your exes are dead to me like if we do see them if we haven't run each other you know not being don't have to be rude i like how erica did it on that first episode with rich though yeah you keep it you keep it calm and casual hey how you doing like, i don't even think she was upset that rich like no t- well, i think she mentioned it but not to the degree of not like, how rich was like yeah pressed. like i just would be like hey how you doing Call it a day. Yeah. You know? Dead it. So, but yeah. let us know how y'all feel. Do you feel like whoever your your mate got a problem with, they got a problem with you? Because, you know, some people feel like, you know, when you're, especially when you're to get married, you're a one. So, like, we're together. Like, there is no more you. There is no me. There's we. And so, if one of us got a problem, the other got a problem. So, it's like, you got a problem with me. No, you got, you got a problem with us. You know, so some people feel that way too. So you know, let us know down in the comments how y'all feel. Do you feel like if your partner is beefing with somebody, you should have beef with that person too? Let us know. Let's move on. Let's move on to the ratchetness of the episode, which is um, I well, it started with Jenna Ski, but Jenna Ski really to me, she doesn't really seem that ratchet. She seems pretty cute, pretty classy. We see her at this photo shoot with Rich and some man named Tony who's supposed to be some person in the industry. I don't have the time. I don't know if these just be actors that just be putting up up here, child. But anyway, she had this photo shoot. The outfit was all right. I don't really know what the photo shoot was supposed to be about. It looked it very, like, casual. I feel like if you're a new artist, you should be trying to do photo shoots that are captivating and, like, catches people's attention. You know what I mean? So, but to me, that just kind of looked like almost like, a lower version of a birthday photo shoot but she looked cute and her makeup was real good but i didn't see what what how was that gonna help her career but anyway her rich and this man take a picture and they're talking about business and the man's like yeah you know i saw you uh because rich starts bringing up uh pressure he's like you know you was at the thing or whatever at the showcase you know arguing with pressure so i feel like i'm gonna bring pressure here so that's when the dude tony like oh yeah like that's like the lady and the dude you was arguing with, right? And she was like, I wasn't arguing with them. Like, they brought that to me. And he was like, well, on the outside looking in, at an industry event, at all boys, even if you wasn't, you know, having that same energy back with them, it looked bad. Because I couldn't tell what was what. I just saw a bunch of riffraff, is what the man was saying. So, Rich tells us that she done invited a uh, fresher with a PH. He done invited him down to the thing. So, so Jeniski can tell him to his face that she is done with him and is going rich. It seems like a very male ego type of thing because that was so unnecessary. I'm pretty sure this girl's a grown woman. She can tell this man on her own. Actually, she ain't got to tell that man nothing. What does she owe this man? Nothing. She ain't got to tell this man what she doing and what she ain't doing. So either she could have told him if she wanted to or not. That was not his place to be like, oh, you're going to tell him right now at this photo shoot that, that you not working with him. I was like, Rich, sit down. But anyway, that's when the Tony dude was like, all right, this is too personal for me, I'm out. Then of course, Fresher walks in. He all loud as always. And she's like, she's like, well, I just wanna let you know that I'm gonna be working with Rich now from now on. And he's like, what, how you gonna do this with me? And she was like, she was like, you know, he be like, well, success and stuff, it ain't overnight. And she was like, okay, but Rich is making stuff happen overnight. So you and he arguing back and forth, well, fine, you don't want to do it. There's a million girls lined up. But then the confessionals want to be like, dang, I really hate I'm missing on Jen Ski because I felt like she was going to be the one to really pop off 
my label. Why can't men just be honest? Till they gotta be great. <laughs> Woo! But instead of being honest and being like, dang, you know, I did F up with you. I should have worked harder for you. But I'm sorry I'm missing out because I thought you were going to be the one to pop off. He got this ego. Or, it's fine. It's fine. I got more girls lined up anyway. You missing out working with this ball, this corn ball, and da 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 And then they argue, talk, and he walk off. So now that everything's good with uh, Jenna Ski, he goes back to Jen, who's just so happened to be grocery shopping on the side of the road. Side of the street. I mean, that's how that's how that's made in New York. What they call them, bodegas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she's shopping and she picking up some fruit and he's going up to her like, "Hey, Jen, I lost Jen and Ski, so we don't got that. We don't have that that popping on." She's like, "Oh, so now she don't even want to work with you no more. She with her rich now. So all that you're doing to get kids a house for nothing, huh?" And he was like. But I need to come back home. He was like, I'm gonna, I'm about to be doggone paying rent at my grandma's house at this point because I'm staying with her so much. Like, come on, Jen. Like, I'm not even doing it with her. Jenna Ski, we was, it was never nothing. Like, and now we really ain't nothing. And that's what she was like, mm hmm, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, now it's like whack a mole. We done knocked that chick down. Another chick done popped up. Some girl we ain't never heard of. Another J. <laughs> Another J. There's too many J's in in a uh, precious life jada is yes. some type of artist that he was working with and she's she done hit jen up in the dm saying hey your man was working with me and your man owed me some money sixty thousand mm -mm -mm. dollars got to be more careful what's she gonna do with all that money mm -hmm. girl i don't know just asking for sixty thousand what you got she said he that's what he took from her that's a lot of money how'd she get sixty I don't know. I look, you know, people do some strap and some change out here, so I I don't know. Or it's just gonna be a hard work. I don't know. But um but yeah, she's like, Well why watch this chick is, is hitting me up or whatever. You must and then of course because that's what she used to with him, she's like, Oh, you must have slept with her too. You must have slept with her too. That's why she's talking out and he's like, No, I worked with her a long time ago. I ain't do none of that with her. I ain't steal no money from her. She crazy, she crazy. And she like, all right, well, if I can't get the answers from you, I'm going to go get the answers from her. And she still ain't having it and pressure. I guess still not let back into the house. So then we get the scene with Jennifer. The What they call it? Jennifer, the, uh, the groupie, the groupie beater, the groupie, oh, the snatcher, groupie, sl groupie slayer. The groupie slayer. Yeah. I was like, Jen, you really just put yourself on her to be stupid, huh? You really just put yourself on her to Clown. look, to be, to be the, to be the, the look like, to look ratchet. Like, what other purpose did you serve on here? To be the chick. I see, child. The chicks must be good for them to be acting like this. She getting something. Got to be. So we met up with this girl, Jada, again, somebody we never heard of. We don't know where she come from. We don't even get no backflash scene or nothing. Nothing. We don't know who this chick is for some Tell reason. She only one episode. Right. Her and Jen meet up with on a bridge. <laughs> and she's like, she got all these papers in her hand. I'm like, sis, if you're really serious about this, getting your money back, like, why wouldn't you go to Word. pressure? Or why wouldn't you, like, get the lawyers first? Right. What do I need to talk to her for? She don't owe me money. Her man owes me money. And she's like, well, you know, I just want to let you know the type of man that you're dealing with. She's like, I know the type of man I'm dealing with. She's like, clearly not because he owe me this money. He owe me this because I was giving him money. I would give him $600. He'd be like, oh, it's going to be $10,000 for a video shoot. But he only spent 3000 of it. Where the rest of my money at? Where the rest of my money going? And so she's like, no, honey, my man, da 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 da. She's like, I know what type of man I got. Then this thing you know, Jen's all upset. And she's like, oh, you, why do chicks always do this when they get mad? Oh, you want to be me. Oh, you wish you was in the house. You wish you was driving our new car. You wish you was da 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 da. And the girl's like, girl, what are you talking about? Your man was the one hit me. Yo, tell me something. He loved me. He wants to spend time with me. He doing all this. And she, sis got. Some supposed receipts. He was at my job last week. Got a picture of that. She got DM shots. She got uh paperwork of the, of the money. So, uh, 
<laughs> so she like apparently you uh you use the money that uh he used that money to build your body. He said all I she said well you know what you right I can't say it for a fact but all I know is after I gave him that money you was coming out looking different with your Whoa, focus surgery and blow, blow. she was like oh well baby you don't know they try to start fighting but of course the security come in the girl Jada basically done wrapped her legs around the security guard he, he hated his job like a little like he was a pole or something he hated and it. she was like honey well look at your body and da 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 I'm like why is black woman do we always go to each other's bodies we should be uplifting one another not talking about each other's bodies and stuff. Jim Blood huh Jim Blood I don't oh I don't know. I just assume. I didn't know you that. You never like, tell folks from New York. <laughs> They're like everybody black up there. But anyway, I don't know. I just assume. I thought she was light skin, but I could be wrong. But as women in general, we don't need to be talking down about each other's bodies or whatever, even if it wasn't naturally done, you know? I agree. But they going back and forth, and it's just a whole bunch of rah, 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 rah. She's like arguing and like, I don't need this. I don't need this. You know, we'll talk about it later. Da, da, da. I'll get my lawyers involved. And Jen go to her little green ba uh, Jeep, and they put Jada in a little black SUV child, and that was the end of that. <laughs> so we don't know if this girl got her money back or if, uh, I guess, Fresh oh would do something with that. Oh Whatever. I don't care. Next person. Um, Who is the next person? Oh, <laughs> Yanny Luther King. <laughs> play on stuff or whatever. She get a call from Mendeecees from the jail and he talking to her talking about son. I wait a minute in jail. How yeah, much he been? So real. <laughs> it was real. And the kids talking to her saying, hey daddy. Hi daddy. And then she talking to Yandy and you know that's when he lets her know that he is going to get a date, a release date to come home. We heard about this a couple of months ago. I thought he was gonna, blows, I thought he was gonna get out before Christmas, but I guess that didn't happen. Uh, but apparently he's still on his way home. So you know we might yet see Mandy who's at the reunion. You don't know. That'll be interesting. Um, but you know he's talking to her on the phone and like how everything they gotta get together. And of course, Andy is super excited because. You don't want to do that, man. I don't think I don't understand, and you know, for the people out there that understands criminal law, maybe you can break this down for me in the comments. I'm confused how his sentence works because she said he got a five year stint, but he got out for two. They had Skyler because I, I remember that because Skyler was barely one when he went to jail, and so Skyler was barely one, and so after that. He had to go back in jail for for three years. Whew. I I don't understand how that works. I don't know. He got out for that man. He got he got out for two years of good behavior, and then he messed up. And I don't know. I didn't really get that. But anyway, good news is Mandisi is coming home. But that leaves problems for Yandy because now she has to get used to, to living a different life now, because she's been used to being a single mother, you know, all by herself. And I wonder, like, did she talk to Mendeecee about adopting, uh, what her name? Infinity, that's her name. Um, because that's a big decision just to be like, I'm already a single mom of two kids. Now I'm going to be a single mom with a third teenager, like a third child, a teenager at that. Like, I wonder if she, like, talked that through with Mendeecee. Because the next scene is her telling Miss Judy, even though I'm pretty sure he would have called her own mama to tell him that he was he was getting released. But anyway, her and Miss Judy, even though they, oof, that weed was slid back, and she just put up a little bit. Uh, that you know, Mendy's is getting out of jail and they're happy and she's talking. And then Yandy was like, the only thing I'm worried about is because I am a foster mom, I gotta make sure that I'm, I'm all the logistics is straight. And I heard a rumor that there might. There, there, that a, a, a ex, I mean, a convicted felon cannot live in the same home as a adopted child, and about right. I, you know, don't want to do anything like that, and you know, because it's like, 
and she gonna have to choose either one to live in the house if they can't be in the house to, together but again i don't understand why this wasn't brought up when she adopted the child because i feel like you being legally married or it will we don't know if they still legally married he you child. go missy <laughs> we don't know being there beside that paperwork huh messy. we don't know we don't we don't know I'm just saying, because I feel like if the system was looking into her and was like, you're married to a convicted felon, I feel like that would have stopped from her from adopting the, the child. They they go into deep research when you have to, when you go through to adopt the child. Like, you just don't just up and be able to take a child. They, you got to go through it's just a background of, you know, stuff. So I feel like it would have came up before. But anywho, you ain't going to try to see what, what's that going to lead to. And see what's gonna go on with that. So, we we shall see what's gonna happen with her and Mendeecees. Cause you know it's gonna be a lot for her to get used to, and for him to get used to. You know, like when he loved his daughter was a baby, she didn't even talk. Now she like up running around talking and everything. He got a, basically a stranger to get to know, cause he doesn't know. Uh, Lil, I'm gonna call that girl Xfinity. Um, <laughs> mm, Infinity. And, you know, and his other two kids that he got by his other two baby mamas. Like, that's a lot. So, we're going to see, child, what's going to happen with Yandy and the family. But well, right if you want to ask the viewers, the big question. What? Yandy in the position. Ooh. Do you choose your child? Ooh. Or your husband that's just getting out of jail? Your foster child or your husband under these circumstances? Are you asking me? Oh, no, I think that's a heavy question. That's yes, a heavy question. Yeah, we so what y'all think? <laughs> I want to know. I didn't want people's opinion. I I feel like it's a very unique situation to be put in. Cause uh, Mona like, did a thing. Yeah, she did. That's, I've never heard that before. Uh, authentic storyline. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know. I know on the internet they were saying things like... <laughs> <laughs> Send it back to her mama. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Their that mama did say she kept running away. Uh, so I said, man, this is just gonna have to wait. That's my child. It's hard. Cause when, says, cause I when need he, my husband. Because when he get out of jail, I don't think he's gonna be able to go straight home. He may have to go to a halfway house like Scrap. Mm -hmm. So I don't that know. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying. That was an interesting storyline, too. Right. Yes, a lot of people was in there. <laughs> Look. Nah, we found out he had a sister, and that's how he was able to. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily, yeah, luckily, you know, Mandy's father, because, you know, I don't think Miss Judy and Yandy had those but couple of records, but. You know, I don't know. I honestly don't know what I would do if I was in that position because that's just hard because you love both of these people so much. It's like, how could I choose? I would, I, me personally, I probably would go through a way of like, I would be getting a lawyer ASAP and help me figure this out. So it's not even an issue by the time my man come home. That's probably what's happening. So hopefully that's what's going on. But um, yeah, so next week we going to finally... These three weeks are sped up in six episodes. And this thing you know, next week is Safari and Erica's wedding. Yes. And, of course, everybody's there, you know, as we saw on the blog. Sin was there. Joe Budden was there. Tahiri's there. It looked like the whole gang is there. Yandy was there also. So, we're going to see whatever drama stuff be happening during that. And people are breaking down, crying. And all this type of stuff is happening at the wedding. So, we shall see what hilarity ensues but as always it's me your girl legs d M U A, and this is my boy jeffrey taylor from jeffrey show live and we out <laughs>